How's it going everybody? It's Razin here for Astrophotography and welcome to the night sky in November. Almost at the end of the year. If that's a good or a bad thing, let me know. If you are new here, the night sky is a curated list where I try to offer you the best deep sky targets that month has to offer. Be them galaxies, nebulae, star clusters, anything like that. I compare these against a full frame camera at a variety of focal lengths, however, I do give equivalents of those focal lengths depending on different popular camera sizes. So I can almost guarantee you'll find something in this list to match your equipment. Aside from these sky targets, let's talk about planets as well, only if they go above about 20 or 30 degrees in altitude, as well as the moon phases and any kind of celestial events that might be going on that month. So with all that said and done out the way, as always, there are timestamps down below and we are going to get beginning. We're going to get begin. We're going to begin with deep sky targets. We're going to begin the list with a very wide selection of focal lengths that even you can do with a camera and a lens or very wide field telescopes. And that is 100 to 300 millimeters. And at this focal length, if you point yourself over to the constellation Monoceres or Monoceros, probably you'll find a cluster of targets there including some pretty famous ones like the Christmas Tree Nebula and the Rosette Nebula. Now at this wide focal length, you can shoot this cluster of targets all in one frame and have a nice wide field shot. And up to 300 mil, you can still just about fit the three of them in there. So have fun with that. Emission-based nebula, always great and very rife at this time of the year. Bumping up a bit to 300 to 400 millimeters now, if you fancy swinging over to the constellation of Eridanus, within there, you're gonna find a dark, moody, slightly reflective nebula in the shape of NGC 1909, otherwise known as the Witch's Head Nebula. Now, because there's not really that much emission going on in this one, narrowband filter is probably not going to be your best shot. There's going to be no real substitution than getting out to some dark skies. By all means, give it a go from the garden. I will if I can see it. I think the house might be in the way, but give it a go. If you do find yourself some dark skies, definitely give this one a go. At 500 to 600 millimeters of focal length, there's no one else to really talk about here apart from M45, the Pleiades, located in the constellation of Taurus. Pleiades, something for everybody here. Blue, reflective, beautiful cluster that you can get through light pollution. But if you get to darker skies and actually back it off a bit, you'll notice the area is rife with dust and beauty. It's a fantastic target that offers something unique for everybody. So give that one a go. At 700 to 800 millimeters, we're gonna swing over to another popular target located in the constellation of Orion. I bet you know what I'm gonna say, but you're probably wrong because it's not M42, it's IC434, the Horsehead Nebula. Again, very famous, especially at this focal length because you'll fit in the Flame Nebula really comfortably as well. The main challenge with this one is that Star Aln attack. It is slab bang in the middle of the flame, frame and it can present a editing challenge but very beautiful very popular target have fun with this one the suggestion earlier was a very nice wide framing but now we're going to swing over to monoceres or monoceros again let me know with a telescope this time to 800 to 1000 millimeters and that's going to be ngc 2264 the christmas tree cluster or the christmas tree nebula i think it's also known as the foxtail nebula perfect time right now if you can get a good photo of this all sorted get it printed it looks like a christmas tree hmm use narrowband filters on it map it to green you've got a christmas tree what's around the corner in december that's some customized christmas cards right there so have some fun with this one so 800 to 1000 millimeters enjoy the christmas tree nebula at one and a half thousand millimeters which is the penultimate focal length i'm going to talk about today we're gonna swing over to the Orion constellation where we have waiting for us NGC 2174, the Monkey Head Nebula. Now this is a very emission-based area of the sky, very, very ripe for those narrowband filters if you so desire. It is often presented in SHO false color palette. Fits nicely in the frame at this focal length and it's gonna be in a decent position in the sky if you've got south-facing views. Now, finally, at 2,000 millimeters, if we go over to the constellation of Perseus, which is a really nice constellation anyway, we have waiting for us NGC 1333, the Embryo Nebula. Now, when you look at this, it's a mixture of reflective and dark. So again, hmm, 
Dark Skies are going to be really your best friend, but isn't that true for everything we do in this hobby? <laughs> so Dark Skies will be your best idea, but more data in light pollution skies, and you've got the reflective element there as well. Looks like a very pretty target for 2000 millimeters. Now onto the planets for you planet hunters out there. Within the skies of November, we have four planets to choose from, which will go above 20 degrees of altitude. Why is that? Below 20 degrees, we have a lot of thick fog and haze in our atmosphere. If you want to know more about imaging planets, I have a video from Damien Peach, a very accomplished planetary imager. However, those planets I've just spoken from, we have Mars, the red planet, very famous, doesn't need any introduction. Mars is up in the night sky. If that doesn't take your fancy, Jupiter is up. So Jupiter is available to take a photo of, always a famous target, the king of the planets themselves. If that doesn't take your fancy, we still have Uranus. Uranus is kicking around. I think that was once named George. And then if George doesn't take your fancy, Neptune. That is the four planets available throughout the night skies in November. So what about those lunar phases then? Throughout November, here are the moon phases. The new moon is on November the 1st. The first quarter being November 9th. The full moon, which is a super moon, falls on November 15th and the last quarter, November 23rd. And that super moon being the beaver moon, the super beaver moon. And if you're interested about a bit of science or history and why we seem to be upset about the term super moon, I did do a video on that, which you can find in the description and the cards above. Now, if you are wondering where the beaver moon got its name from, it depends on who you ask. Some people say it was called the beaver moon because the Native Americans used to be setting their beaver traps to catch the beavers, uh, obviously for pets and recreational use, I'm sure. The other camp says that it's called the beaver moon because it was around this time when beavers, <laughs> beavers far too, when those furry mammals, are they mammals? When beavers were busy damming up the rivers with their sticks and making that, I've completely lost myself here. <laughs> now, if you don't want to take sides in the great beaver debate. <laughs> if you don't fancy taking sides in the great beaver debate of 2024, you can freely call it the frost moon also. However, I personally subscribe to the notion of beavers getting busy with their dams, and I accept that headcanon as I accept them as our new lords and overrulers. <laughs> All right, what else we got? <laughs> And now for some events that are taking place throughout November. There's two to speak of, that's four. There's two to speak of going on. On November the 16th, the very full, formerly known as Supermoon, will be passing close by the Pleiades. Now, you can catch them maybe in about a 500 millimeter camera lens. However, you're never going to get the nebulosity of the Pleiades and a good exposure on the moon at one time. You're going to have to shoot for the Pleiades and then composite the moon in afterwards if you want to have a very blooming picture of the Pleiades as well as the moon. And on the 17th of November, Uranus is at opposition, which means it is directly opposite the sun from our perspective. So sun, us, Uranus. Makes it a very good time for actually viewing it and taking a photo of it. It may be far away, it may be closer, but it is directly opposite from the sun. Means it's very fully lit, that's why. And in November, it do be treating us to not one, but two meteor showers. The first one being the Southern Taurids meteor shower. Now this will be present from the 20th of October all the way to the 10th of December. They peak around the 12th of October. Now, if you're paying attention to the lunar phases, that means the moon is gonna be big, bright, and very disruptive to these otherwise quite dim meteors. So you might not actually see much. They are a low rate meter shower anyway. That moon is most likely gonna wash a lot of them out as well. So go ahead, have a look. Just set your expectations accordingly because of the moon. The second meteor shower gracing our skies in November is that of the Leonids. They come from the radial point located, funny enough, in the constellation Leo. Now this particular meteor shower runs from the 6th to the 30th of November and again peaks on the 17th of November. Once again, if we look at that lunar phase chart of ours, we know that the moon is two days old out of a full moon. Feel free to look at it, try and take some photos, some long exposures, but set your settings accordingly. And again, set your expectations accordingly. 
there is always next year. And that is it. That is the night sky in November, all wrapped up, ready to go, straight to your device of choosing that you're watching. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found something useful. Let me know in the comments down below what you'll be targeting throughout November. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you could have done better, give it a thumbs down and consider subscribing for more like this. All that's left is for me to say thank you very much for watching. Hope you have clear skies and keep looking up. Keep them cameras clicking. I'll see you later.